Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of Solo Spelunking. And I decided to do yet another playtest session of my game Explorers of the Untamed Wilds. And um, yeah, I implemented, so it is worth version 1.3 now. I um, yeah, revised some wording and um, I implemented in uh, a suggestion made uh, from a user in the comments uh, from Grognard Solo Gaming. And uh, I think it was actually a pretty good idea. Uh, he suggested to, instead of tracking food and water for everybody, uh, just track it as a party resource so that uh, the forage action actually um, matters more because um, yeah, it's easier to run out of resources and it strengthens the party's um, um, yeah, team work capability and it simplifies bookkeeping. So I decided to uh, do away with the individual food and water and instead I called it the provisions usage die, which includes food and water and is tracked as a party resource, maximum is 1d8. And to get the provisions die, every party member at least needs a water skin and some rations to get the d8 provisions die. And um, I, so I just make one roll per camp uh, action and or per day. And this is now a party resource. So I'll see how, how this goes. And if you remember last time I was thinking about if the regeneration rate of the sidekicks of the companions maybe is too high by uh, having them regenerate 10 plus constitution every short rest. So I decided I will try a different approach. Um, the bell curve is my friend. So whenever you take a short rest, the companions who don't have hit dice to spend, they regenerate 2d6 plus constitution bonus. So it'll be some, most of the time it'll be between six and eight points plus constitution. But sometimes if you're unlucky, it'll be less and sometimes it'll be more. And so this uh, should add a little more variety. So we will think or see how this goes. So the plan for today is just finish this combat and then I will leave the dungeon. I think you have seen enough dungeon exploration. I will just pretend that I have completed my quests and gained the relics and the book. And then I will try or, or test overland travel. So um, I decide that I'm in this dungeon down here, which is now in this playtest a level one dungeon and not a level six dungeon. And I need to get the book and the relic back to this town to Beltar up here so that I do have some traveling to do. And I will try out this overland travel mechanic so that you can see this in action and I get a feel for how it plays. And so we will do this today, just finish this quick combat with the zombies and then um, we'll leave the dungeon because as per the rules we are, or we wanted to, to take a long rest now, but it's uh, interrupted. So we do not get the benefit of a short, of a long rest, but you can leave a dungeon Anytime or only after you have completed a long rest before you roll on the exploration table so that you start the new day fresh in the wilderness. So this is what we will do after this combat. We will leave and head out into the wilderness and get back to the town of Beltar. All right. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's just do this. So here are the zombies and I already wrote down their stats and... Um, they get an initiative modifier of minus two. And um, so I have a slight feeling that they might go last, but they're difficult to kill. And um, yeah, so let's roll initiative for the zombies. And um, <clears throat> here's my zombie die. So they are at minus two. And oh, they got 18 minus two, that is 16. So actually 
they go first <laughs> because our highest initiative is 15. All right, so the zombies, they go first. They have initiative 16. But they're slow. They only have a speed of four squares and they smell of decay. So while we are making camp and we all got inspiration. Oh, and I forgot to roll the, the before we go to sleep, you got to roll your now the provision style. Let's do this real quick. So only one roll for the entire party, the provision style. And it's a seven, so it stays at the eight. All right, so we all got had food, but uh, we are disturbed um, and they go first. So um, yeah, they attack us while we are still yeah, asleep. So the first zombie, oh, this is difficult terrain, so he will go one, two, three, four. No attack of opportunity because within threatened reach and he will attack. Um, let's roll off either me or Lucas, the archer. So even it's me. And it's uneven. So he will attack Lucas, the archer. And he attacks with plus three and deals 1d6 plus one points of damage with a slam. So, uh, and Lucas has an AC of 13. And he hits 14 for three points of damage. So Lucas is at eight. All right, and the other zombie. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ooh, he can only attack me, and he will. <clears throat> And he hits plus three, 12 plus three is 15. That's enough for three points of damage. So my hero Alric is at nine hit points. But now it is our turn. Alric, Lucas, Mia Lee, and finally Kelvin. All right, so um, I need to move a little. So to give everybody some room so i will go first and i will move over here for two squares because this is difficult terrain i stay within threatened reach of both of them so um i'm not in danger and i attack the orange zombie with my plus one magical rapier and they only have an ac of eight but you know Alric by now that doesn't mean much uh, it's well within the realm of possibility that even with my plus one rape here, I will miss. <clears throat> and it's a 15. I do hit, but for minimum damage, I rolled a one, but I do get plus six, so it's still seven. So the orange zombie, he's got uh, 22 hit points, minus seven, that is 15. And the other one is still at full hit points. So that was my, um, yeah, my turn. Okay. Um, then 14, initiative 14 is Mia Lee and Lucas. So who wants to go first? I think Mia Lee. And she, Let's say she can go one, two, three, four, five, six. She will move up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So still no attacks of opportunity. And also attack the orange zombie with her dual scimitars. So blue and green and 2d6 and she gets plus two, so she attacks plus four versus the orange zombie. And she hits nine and 12 rolled. They only got eight AC for seven points and three points. So that is 10 total points of damage. So the orange zombie is down to five. However, they are hard to kill. Um, they get a save 
when they are when they're dropped to zero HP, they get a save, and um, and if they do that, um, they make the save. They are still at one hit point. So this is called undead fortitude. All right. So that was Mia Lee. Now Lucas. All right. So Lucas. He is adjacent, so he would attack with disadvantage using his bow. Uh, what he will do is he will move up one. And he will still use his bow because they only have an AC of 8. So he will attack with disadvantage. And I gotta use the lower one. Trying point blank shot with the long bow. But you know what? Um, no, he will. Yeah, he will attack the gray zombie. Ah, look at this. Four, but he gets plus six. And so that is still ten. That is enough, but only minimum damage, three points. So that is the gray zombie, and he is now at 19 hit points. Alright, so that was Lucas, and finally we have Kelvin, uh, our level 2 guy, sword and board, wannabe cleric, and he will move up only one to give Alric some, some wiggle room and also attack the grey zombie using his long sword, attacking with plus 4. And he rolls an 18 and he deals a lot of damage. 7 plus 2, 9 points against the gray zombie. So the gray zombie is at 10 hit points. Alright, so that's it for our turn. And now we start a new combat round with the zombies. Because they got initiative 16. Alright, the gray zombie, he will focus on Lucas because he already wounded him, so he basically already clawed and, and um, yeah, bit his way into him and uh, attacks. Uh, where's the D here? Plus three. And he rolls a six. Plus three is nine, so that's a miss, but that's good because he would have dealt maximum damage. And the orange zombie, um, so if, if the orange zombie would move here, she would get an attack of opportunity, and he's also not intelligent. They got intelligence three, so he just um, chooses between Mia Lee and Alric, even as Alric. No, it's uneven, it's Mia Lee. So he faces towards Mia Lee uh, because this is also where he got the most damage dealt and he will attack her. Plus three and her AC is also 13. Ooh, and he hits on the spot. 10 plus three is 13 for six points of damage. That is actually a lot. So Mia Lee is at five hit points. Yes, five plus six is 11, yeah. So let me see, plus one damage, yeah. So she's at five, so ooh, we are all wounded. Ugh. But that was the zombie's turn. He does not, or he does move one uh, over here just, just because he can. All right, now it's our turn again, and we start with Alric, my player hero. And he uses his rapier, his magical plus one rapier again, to attack. And he rolls a nine, he hits for uh, 6 plus 3, 9 points versus the orange zombie. 
All right, so the orange zombie would be reduced to zero, but now he gets a save. So I dealt nine points of damage. So he's going to succeed at a save of five plus damage taken, unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. So I did nine points. So that is a DC 14 constitution save. Um, yeah, and he's got plus three. No, he fails. All right, so I'm lucky. Ugh. And the zombie is killed. All right, so that was Alric. And now, uh, initiative 14, Mia Lee and Lucas. All right, so Mia Lee, she will go first. She moves two into this difficult terrain here. And her dual scimitars flash through the darkness as she attacks. Oh, only one hit. The 19 hits the three. Oh, wait a minute. Three and she's got plus four. No, that is seven. That is one, one short. They got eight. So she deals six points of damage. So the gray zombie is at four hit points. Six points. Four hit points. And that was it for her. And now... Hmm. Lucas does another point blank disadvantage shot. And I gotta use the five but plus six and he again deals nine points of damage. So the zombie is reduced to zero and he also gotta make a save. Uh, five plus nine, 14. So maybe he's still alive, 14. Plus three constitution, but no, he rolls a five. So he point blank shoots an arrow through the zombie's head, piercing its brain and killing it. All right, so we get XP two zombies that is 50 each, that is 100 XP in our XP pool. So we are at 900 pool XP. All right, so now um, we complete our long rest, but we do not gain the benefit of a long rest because it was interrupted by a fight. That means, um, yeah, no hit dice regenerate. So um, Alric, he used his one hit dice. The companion, they don't have hit dice, but nobody regenerates hit points. So actually, we start the new adventuring day pretty, pretty uh, beat up. Because, um, yeah, we couldn't, couldn't rest. So we exit the dungeon. At the start of the next adventuring day, we exit the dungeon and... Let's just assume we we got our quest items and we exit the dungeon. So um, again, our marching order will be, I think, like this. So this will be our marching order through the wilderness. And now gameplay moves to the hex map. So it's the start of the new adventuring day. You take a token. I take this one. So we are at this dungeon here. And now, can you see it? Let me look on the camera. I think you can. And now we need to travel from here to Beltar. So now an adventuring day in the wilderness. Um, you have a movement speed of four hexes. Movement is optional. Um, this is, however, a new adventuring day. So even though we didn't get the benefit of a long rest, we could take two short rests if we wanted to, but we can only take the first short rest after 
we resolve an encounter. And uh, yeah, we couldn't do it after the long rest in the dungeon because, or during the long rest because we already used our short rests and now the next adventure day starts. So our short rests refresh, but the rules say you can only take a short rest after you have resolved an encounter. So we still need to go through one encounter. And um, yeah, so now we get can move and uh, this terrain that is not swamp, hills, mountains or forest is grassland plains. Grassland plains is always a level one uh, encounter region and one hex costs one square of movement. So we could move for hexes and if we decide not to move, moving is optional, we could stay in our current hex but then we still would need to make four encounter rolls. So we would roll 4d6 and on a roll of 1, it's a 1 in 6 encounter chance, we would still have to resolve an encounter. All right, so we will move, of course, So because we, we get back. So now, um, I used this green die, now we move 1. And check for an encounter, only on a one. When encounter chance in the planes is one in six. No encounter. We move two. No encounter. We move three. No encounter. And we move five to the city of Keldar. We still need to check for an encounter. No. All right, now we enter the city. It fits at the end of the adventuring day and the rules say if you enter a city, you have to immediately um, take a room because you're weary from travel, take a long rest at an inn and then start the next adventuring day in town where you could take up to four town actions. So this is actually um, not too bad because we do need a long rest and it is safe in town. So it costs 1d6 gold pieces per character. So I will just roll 2d6 and deduct this money from our pool gold. And this is what we have to pay for our rest. So that is six, seven, nine gold pieces. All right, nine gold pieces. So we are at 391. And everybody takes a long rest. And now we are healed. So this is great. Long rest. We still have our inspiration because we didn't use it. And Alric also regenerated his one used hit die. All right. And now we have one day that we can use in town if we wanted to, or at the start of a new adventuring day, before we take the first town action, we could also decide to leave again for the wilderness. And I'm not... Uh, I do not want to do um, town actions now, so um, because I want to uh, travel some more, so we will just leave and head over to Beltar. And of course, if you rest in an inn, you also do not need to roll your provisions die because a meal and water and everything is included in the price for the room. All right, so next adventuring day, we got four hexes of movement and we want to get to Beltar. So we move one and I can track movement actually here. So we moved one and we roll for an encounter. And we do encounter something. So we moved one and we encounter something. So now um, I actually need to get the PDF out because I didn't print out the wilderness encounter tables. So let me give me just one second here. 
to get the PDF out. Du, 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 du. Uh, where is my reader? There. And Explorers of the Outer Wilds. Here we have it. And Encounters. Mm -hmm. Counter Tables, Grassland. All right, so here we have the Encounter Tables on a PDF. And um, let's roll 1d20. And we roll a 6. Grassland 6. Oh, a group of six bandits has prepared an ambush. Succeed at a DC 12 perception check to avoid a surprise round and face a fight. All right, so the classic bandit ambush. So we moved one, we encountered them. So now if you do a skill check, you can choose um, the party member that attempts the skill check. And if, if the party member succeeds, it's counted as a success for the entire party. And it's DC 12 because the mechanic is always 11 plus X. X is always the level of the area you're in and since grassland is only level one fixed it is dc 12 so let's say, see who has got the highest perception um, mia lee as an elf has a high perception and anybody else oh even though lucas is my wannabe ranger he does not have perception but Thank God we have Mia Lee, so she's got plus three. So now I need to succeed at a DC 12 perception check with plus three. And if I fail, I face a surprise round. And it's six bandits. And nine plus three, so I do make it, luckily, on the spot. So um, we do... Um, spot the ambush so i will just use the the whole battle grid now because we are outdoors so i have to move this out of the way so i gotta we are one up from keldar i leave it here and so i can just leave my marching order here and this is like now blocking terrain these are either trees or large rocks or whatever and low objects are like uh, thick underbrush and this is like uneven ground rubble so we can just use the features as they are and we can um place the bandits and you know what i just had an idea because the the thing is now you're this is meant to be a cooperative experience and how where do you place them all right so they have prepared an ambush so what i will do i will just um place them randomly let me just um add some possible so one two three four so this is then four five for all monsters six so these are possible areas where monsters can spawn and if you're in the wilderness and you just roll with 1d6 so let's see where they would spawn on six so this is here so they have prepared an ambush here behind this rock and there are six bandits so one two three four five um do i have an, and white six so i even have six different colors so i could even distinguish by color let me check if you can see everything so one two three four five this is a square here and six so you got to place them as close to this um, spawn point as possible and Mia Lee she spotted this bandit coming out of hiding they were just about to 
to charge at us uh, or, or wanted to unleash a volley of arrows, but we spotted them, so there's no surprise round. All right, so now let's get the bandit stats out here and then roll initiative. Bandits. All right, so they're here in the NPC section, Bandit. So they have an AC of 12. AC 12. They have 11 hit points, HP 11. And they have nothing special. They got a light crossbow and a scimitar. So they and they attack plus three. So plus three, one d6 plus one in melee with a scimitar or plus three, one d8 plus one with a light crossbow. And they have an initiative bonus of plus one. All right, so since it is not a surprise round, let's roll initiative for the bandits and see where they fit in. Eight plus one is nine. So we go before the bandits do. All right, and the first one that goes again is Alric. All right, and Alric, he's also got a light crossbow that he can use to attack plus five with 1d8 plus three. So, um, yeah, he will just, um, he will just move one square backwards and he's got a straight line of sight, so this is just difficult terrain, it does not provide cover, and he can just attack this bandit, and I'm not going to bother with range increments here, so it's just a plus five, and uh, for possible 1d8 points plus three. So plus five versus AC 12. Plus 5 versus AC 12. Oh, it's an 8 plus 5, that is 13, and I deal 9 points of damage. So the white bandit is pretty wounded. So that is the WB, the white bandit. So he is only at 2 hit points. So, yeah, so I move backwards, light crossbow, poof! And while he's charging forward, he's hit in the shoulder and grits his teeth as he's hit by the bolt. All right, so that was Arik. And now we got Lucas and Mia Lee. All right, so ranged attackers first, obviously. So Lucas, he will also move one square. And from here, from this corner, Shooting around corners, he shoots also at the white bandit to bring him down. All the other ones, he can't see them. They're behind this uh, large rock. And the other, these guys have cover because of him. And now, so she, he will just shoot at this guy. Plus six. That is 8 plus 6, that is enough maximum damage, 10 points of damage. So also he loses an arrow and in the forward movement, the first one in the shoulder uh, and the second one right through the throat, this bandit already goes down. So the white bandit is done. All right, and now we have... Mia Lee and Kelvin, but they do not have ranged weapons and they will of course not um, um, charge up to the bandits. So we know that they can shoot. So um, he, because he's got a shield and a high defense, a high AC, he will move here, one, two, and she will move one, two, three, four, five, six, behind this rock for cover and then she can when they um, if they should 
move up they uh, she can um, attack so what do the bandits do all right so um, yeah their first momentum is gone so they will probably not enter melee because they deal more damage range and they have cover available here low objects so they will move so the black bandit he will move one two three four five six he will move one two three four five six into these brushes take cover and from this position he can shoot at um at Kelvin, Kelvin does not have cover, however, uh, he's got an AC of 15, so he um, uses his shield to defend himself, but the bandit, he attacks plus 3 with his light crossbow at Kelvin. And he rolls a 10 plus 3, that is 13, that is not enough, he's got 15, so he... Um, lifts up his shield and the bolt poof, oh, hits the shield and is stuck in the shield. All right, next bandit, the orange bandit, will move one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And also um, attack Kelvin. And he misses, he rolls a two. <laughs> Next bandit. Um, the gray one. One, two, three, four, five. He will move in here and from this corner also shoot at Kelvin. <laughs> he misses, natural one. And we got two bandits left, so this bandit actually can shoot from here, from this corner, around the corner at Kelvin, and he will. So they all shoot at him, because he's also closest, and he misses, he only rolls a 7, so that was the blue bandit, and the red bandit, he moves up here, and then from this corner, also around the corner, at Kelvin. So they have no intention of coming closer. So 11 plus 3, 14. No, that barely misses, but this is good because he would have dealt maximum damage, 9 points, but uh, he didn't. So, all right, so they actually don't seem eager to, um, to enter melee, so we will force them into melee. So Alec is first. And he would move one, two, three, four, five, six. So that that'll go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He moves to the black bandit and attacks now with his plus one magic rapier. And that is a 6 plus 6 is 12, so that is enough, lucky me, for 10 points of damage. However, they got 11, so the Black Bandit, BB, Black Bandit, uh, he's seriously injured uh, and is only left standing with one hit point. All right, so now we have Lucas and Mia Lee. Lucas... He will move. He will move one square, and from this corner, shoot at the orange bandit who's got cover because of the low objects. That is a plus two bonus. So he attacks versus an AC of fourteen. The orange bandit, and he still hits. He rolls a 13 and deals maximum damage, 8 plus 2, also 10 points. So OB, the orange bandit, is also at 1 hit point. Ugh. That was Lucas. Now Mia Lee. Alright, so now she will not be able to, to attack this round, but she can move up. So 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, and then she'll take an action to use the dash action and just go two, four, six. Oh no, just go, yeah, no, two, four, six to here. So she can only attack next round. But, uh, alright, that was not too smart because now she will get attacked uh, by all of these guys. But Kelvin, he will come to the rescue. One, two, three, four, five, six. And also take the dash action and move one, two, three, four, staying within the threatened reach. Actually, he could also move another five. He would move here. And, um, yeah, so that's our turn. And now it's the bandit's turn. And now we start with these guys. They will both shoot at Lucas. However, since he is engaged in melee with their allies, they will have disadvantage. Disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage. Uh, dup, dup, dup. Wait. Two, I need 2d20 and one damage die. Yeah. All right. So the blue bandit first with disadvantage. Oh, but even with disadvantage, she hits. He rolls a 16. So that is six points of damage versus Lucas. Uh, versus Kelvin. Sorry, Kelvin. All right. Six. So he is again at 16. And that was the blue bandit. And now the red bandit also at Kelvin. Oh no, disadvantage, she's got to use the three. No, so these two bandits, they have, they acted. All right, so the orange bandit, who is severely wounded, turns to face Kelvin because Kelvin just got hit and now he uses his scimitar and attacks in melee. And he hits a 19 for four points of damage. All right, so Kelvin is at um, 12 hit points. That was the orange bandit and he will move. Oh no, he will not move because then she will get an opportunity attack. All right, orange bandit, gray bandit also focuses on Kelvin because now they also concentrate on bringing down one threat. Ten plus three, that is not enough. He would need a 15. All right, so now we only have the black bandit left. And the black bandit, he will attack Alric because Alric attacked him also with his scimitar. And of course he hits 13 plus 3 for 5 points of damage. So Alric is at 5 hit points. Uh, and now we start the next combat round. And it is our hero's turn. Alric first. So Alric, even though it is a waste, will focus on the bandit in front of him. Because even though he's wounded, he still attacks. So, plus one rape here. And he hits, he rolls a 12, and that is enough damage to kill him, because he only needed one, so the black bandit ugh, is gone. And now he can still move, and he will. He moves one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, up to here. That's Alric. Now, uh, at initiative 14, we have Lucas the Archer and we have Mia Lee. All right, Mia Lee will go first this time to get rid of her orange bandit, hopefully. 
So I only need to roll to hit because she will definitely deal one point of damage. So she uses her action and her bonus action and she misses. She rolls a two and a four. All right, she could move and she will move. She will move one, two squares up here into this underbrush, still staying within threatened reach to clear the way and um, but mm, let's see all right so this guy uh, Lucas yeah Lucas also shoots at the orange bandit but now the orange bandit he's got plus two cover and Lucas gets disadvantage because he's in melee with allies but I only need to hit so uh, plus two, so versus an AC of 14 with disadvantage. AC of 14 and uh, disadvantage, I gotta use the one, it's a critical failure. So poof, the arrow um, goes someplace. All right, so now um, that was Lucas. Now we have left Kelvin, initiative 13. All right, now Kelvin will finish him off hopefully. Just needs to hit using his long sword plus four. And yes, he hits. So Orange Bandit is dead. But he can still move now. Um, and he will move. He will move one, two up here. Still staying within threatened reach. All right, it's the bandits' turn. We got three bandits left. The gray bandit. He attacks. Um, wounded. Alric is wounded. Yeah, he will attack Alric because Alric is wounded and bleeding, and um, maybe he can take him out. and yes he does so he rolls a 15 and hits for seven Alric has five hit points left so Alric is at zero HP and therefore dying so Alric goes down with zero HP um, that was this guy he can move but he won't because of threatened reach and now the other ones they will charge now because they do not want to get the disadvantage. Uh, so this blue bandit, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. He will move like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, and attack. Kelvin. Ah, damn. You know what? Alec, of course, forgot his... A bonus action second wind feature but that's my problem now he's down all right so that's a miss and the other red bandit one two three four five six also all right 17 that is a hit for three points so Kelvin is at 9 HP Alright, 9 HP. So that's all the bandits. Now our turn. Alric needs to miss down. He needs to make a death saving throw. Um, yeah, so let me check. I think this is just unmodified and I gotta roll a 10 or higher. Let me check this real quick. Um, dip, dip, dip. Death saving throw. Combat. Here we go. Boo, bo, bo, boom. Damage and healing hit points. Zero hit points. All right. So um, damage types, resistances. He dropping to zero hit points. When you drop to zero hit points, so massive damage. Damage remaining. If the remaining damage equals your maximum hit point. No, it didn't. All right, so um, death saving throws. Zero hit points. You must make a special saving throw 
10 or higher you succeed yeah at the uh, um, okay mm -hmm. okay so I gotta make a death saving throw death saving throw <laughs> And of course I fail, I roll a 9, so first death save, I mark this here, D, S, F, death save, failure, 1. Alright, so that was my turn. Now, um, initiative 14, we have Lucas and Mia Lee. Alright, Lucas the archer, he will move, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and from here shoot at the red bandit from this corner let me see yeah I can see so um, he will get cover because of this guy he provides cover and also disadvantage so again it is against AC 14 with disadvantage the red bandit oh critical hit which I can't use I gotta use the two because of disadvantage so I miss mm, damn all right so that was Lucas initiative 14 and now we need to um who's the other Mia Lee Mia Lee all right, Mia against the Orange Bandit, using her dual scimitars. Oh, look at this. 18 and 14, that is two hits. That is five damage and three damage. That is eight damage versus the Gray Bandit. All right, so the Gray one, he is eight damage damage so he's got three hit points left all right that was Mia Lee and um, let's say one of my guys had a healers kit I think um, no wait uh, herbalism kit flu and woodcarver's tools he had woodcarver's tools that was it okay <laughs> damn no healers kit all right so um Mia Lee acted now it is 13 initiative 13 kelvin so he will also focus on the wounded bandit to reduce incoming attacks hopefully killing it i do not need to roll damage because even if i roll a one it'll be three points of damage just need to hit plus four versus 12 and yes i roll a 10 so that is a hit so uh, while he is busy focusing on Mia Lee, choop, he is killed by Kelvin, who now faces his enemies. All right, so bandits turn. They will not flee. They fight to the death. It's all over now anyways. And, um, and since this is a board game and an RPG, all the enemies fight to the death. Um, the blue bandit attacks versus Kelvin. And he misses and the red bandit. And he misses. All right, so the bandits miss. Our turn, Alric, death saving throw. Number two, already one failure. Oh, look, there's even a box. Oh, a, fa a success, a 19. So I can actually do this down here. So I got one failure and one success. And that's it for him. Now we got Lucas. So he will now go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now he can shoot without cover, but still with disadvantage. So he shoots without cover, but with disadvantage at the red bandit.
Ah, disadvantage. That is 5 plus 6 is 11. Close, but not enough. So Lucas misses. So now the second initiative 14 is um, Mia Lee. So she will move... One, two, three, four, five, six to not interfere with Lucas shooting, not granting him cover, and use her dual scimitars to attack also the gray bandit, uh, the red bandit. Yes, 14 hits, 4 doesn't, so that is 4 plus 2, that is 6 points of damage, the red bandit. Six points, so he's at five. And we have th initiative 13, Kelvin, who also uses his longsword now to attack. Ba -ba -dum, plus four. Ugh, that is a miss, critical failure. This is actually harder than I thought against these bandits. All right, so the bandits, the red wounded bandit is focusing on Kelvin. Kelvin. And he misses, luckily. And the blue bandit on Kelvin. And he also misses. Whew, whew, that was close. All right, so Alric, death saving throw. Ah, he's still bleeding there. Uh, 12, a success. So he might become stable. And if I roll, um, let me see. Um, death saving throw. All right, roll up. Uh, no effect on third, you become stable or you, you all right, so keep track. All right, third, I'll become stable. Okay, hmm. And if I become stable, uh, stabilized, okay. I still do not uh, remain unconscious. Stable creature that isn't healed regains one hit point after one d four hours. Okay, so yeah, we um, can skip that and just say that he will then get one hit point. Um, yeah, so I made my success. So now it's uh, initiative fourteen. Uh, Lucas, he will shoot at the red bandit with disadvantage, but no cover. At the red bandit, and it is two sixes. That is good because he's got plus six, so that is 12. That hits, and he deals 10 points of damage maximum. So Lucas took careful aim and <laughs> kills the bandit. Now Mia Lee um, makes her dual scimitar attacks versus the blue bandit. Maybe if both of them hit, she can take the bandit out. Uh, only one hits, but for seven points. The last bandit, the blue one, seven. So he only has got four hit points left, and we still have Kelvin. So she will move one, two, just because she can, and now Kelvin attacks. And with his long sword, maybe if he hits, and he hits and deals maximum damage, ten points. So yeah. All right. So they're all killed. Now, before we tend to Alric, uh, the the rules say every intelligent humanoid creature, and those are bandits, has two d six gold pieces. So I roll 2d6 and I just take it times 6. So, oh, that's 10 times 6. That is 60 gold that we get. And also 
So 390 plus 60, that is 451. And we roll a d6, and I altered it a little only if... I, oh no, I, I think I didn't. So on a 5 or 6, we even get more money. Let's roll. No, we don't. So we only got... So we, we quickly... Now we need to stabilize um, Alric, and uh, this is... Um, I need to, to succeed at a uh, medicine check. Um, DC 10, medicine check. All right, so who do I have? I got Lucas with plus four medicine. So Lucas, he quickly tries to stabilize. Plus four, DC 10. Yes, 17. All right, so now he is stable, Alec is stable. We do not have any healing available because nobody can cast. So after 1d4 hours, which I skip, so he will just be at one hit point uh, and, and severely wounded. So now, again, we are still, that was our first move. And now we got three more hexes left, but we got the problem that we are all wounded, so but this is an encounter, so we can uh, decide to take a short rest, and we definitely will. So, um, yeah, I gotta be smart about this now. So, um, Alric, before we take the short rest, um, oh no, we can't do that because I this is like a board game, not an RPG. I can do this only while I'm in combat, so I can't use my my second wind. I would need to do this during the combat mode, but uh, we take a short rest. So I will take my short rest token. We moved one and I will use my hit die to regain 1d10 plus constitution. Constitution is plus two. Maybe I'm lucky. Oh, of course, I'm not lucky. I roll a one. Plus two is three. So I'm at four hit points. So I'm so unlucky with this guy. So, and Lucas, he is healthy. And Mierli is healthy. But Kelvin. And Kelvin now, by the new rules, regenerates 2d6 plus constitution. And his constitution is one. So he will regenerate 2d6 plus one hit points. Alright, so this 4, 5 plus 1 is 6 hit points, so he's at 15. Alright, so we've taken our first short rest for the adventuring day. We traveled one hex. We can travel three hexes more. So let's do this. Hex number 2. Move this here, check for an encounter. No, who lucky? The 2. Hex number 3. I will not go into the swamp. Check for an encounter. Oh, whew, lucky. And last hex. Encounter check. And I can't take short rests after moving, only after I resolved an encounter. So since I didn't resolve encounters, which is not bad, I also couldn't take another short rest. And another Four. So no encounter. So now we need to end the adventuring day and take a um, long rest. And in the wilderness, you can look for a secure campsite. And um, this is a survival check. So survival, uh, that'll be the expertise of Lucas. He's got plus four. So I will look for a safe campsite. And the DC is, I think, 11 plus 1 D6. I need to look it up. It's 15. Just go with that. And if I make the check, I do not have to make an encounter roll. Yes, 18 plus 4. So we find a secure campsite for our long rest, which means no encounter during the night. I could assign camp actions. And I will, but... Um, I'm a little bit on the clock here right now because I got a different appointment. So I will end the session here. We are already at an hour. And the next session, however, will be continuing my Dragon Bane campaign. So 
Now we just got a, a glimpse of the, the exploration mechanic. And um, yeah, so I hope, of course, as always, um, you like what you saw. And if you do, please like and subscribe to um, yeah, help the channel grow because it costs you nothing and it makes me happy. And as always, stay safe and stay healthy until the next video. Bye-bye.